Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Sorry it's been uh, a little bit since I posted. Uh, two things have happened. One, uh, I had a daughter, uh, another daughter, uh, and two is I got a new computer and uh, <laughs> not really sure how to deal with the hard drives and get all the software and the videos and everything over. Finally got that figured out, so apologize for the delay, but pretty exciting stuff we're going to talk about today. I am officially in the market for a new car slash track car. So uh, I've narrowed the options to about three or four cars and that's what we're going to be talking today. Uh, but please stay tuned. another car so I can have this truck for family vehicles weekend vehicle off-roading obviously things like that and then have another vehicle for um, for track use you know easier to drive downtown stuff like that so finally the time has come that I have uh, some budget to look at other vehicles and the blessing for my wife now she has not agreed on pretty much any car except for one but let's let's go through the cars first the very first car uh, that is near and dear to my heart because I used to have one is a 2004 Subaru WRX STI uh, it was one of the first cars that I owned outside of like a 71 VW bus and things like that it was my first like uh, performance stick shift car that I own so it's near and dear my heart why the 04 for a couple different reasons one is it's the first year that came out in the United States I think that's pretty cool two is it was the first year uh, it was sorry it was the last year that Subaru won the World Rally Championship so they won it in 2003 with the 2004 model so those two things I think are pretty cool. The values of these are so jacked up. Uh, I obviously don't want one that has another motor that is fully modded that you know has over six or over a hundred thousand miles on it. So that's that's one car, okay? And please comment below what you guys think. If there's a hard no or something that you guys have an opinion on or any folks that are watching the channel that aren't car guys as well and into tracking, let me know. So let's let's go to the second car. The second car is an E46 M3. So these cars, why it's on the list, um, I, it was sort of like a, a bucket list car for me when I was in high school when they came out. Uh, something that I always wanted. I think they look awesome. I know there's some issues with them, uh, but they made a ton of them. They're uh, relatively priced well. I think for something under a hundred thousand dollar or under hundred thousand miles, you can find it for twenty, thirty thousand dollars. So um, that is another car that I'm looking at uh, that is on the list. Number three, a 911 996. Now, why a 996? Well, I'll be honest with you, probably the only one that I can afford. <laughs> I have always loved 911s. One of my dream cars that I'll probably never own is a 911 GT2. Uh, so, and obviously the new GT3s, but um, that is a bucket list car, probably never own one, uh, but 
the 996 is one of those vehicles that is somewhat obtainable because of a few items. One, it was the first time it switched from air-cooled to water-cooled, even though they're all water-cooled now, so the purists don't like it. Two, headlights. The headlights look super weird. I don't really give a shit. I think it looks fine. There's aftermarket stuff that you can put on top of it to sort of, uh, I think they call it the egg or whatever, egg look. Um, so that's another another car. So three so far. We have uh, a Subaru STI, we have an E46 M3, and we have a 911 996. Car number four. And I think these last two cars are sort of at the top of my list, but they also, are on the more expensive side compared to all the ones I've already shared. Number four, a Camaro SS 1LE. So, I made a Camaro account three years ago when I had my Focus RS, uh, maybe four years ago, to purchase a uh, ZL1 1LE, which is I'm glad I didn't because, you know, I got married, started the family. I would have got rid of the car so quick. Uh, but that if you guys haven't seen that, take a moment right now. I'll, I'll try to pull up a picture. It is probably one of the baddest looking cars I've ever seen with the canards, the aero, everything about it is just badass. Uh, and it's a phenomenal track car, but that's not the car I'm talking about. I'm talking about the SS 1LE. So it is the V8 that they have. It is the 1LE, so it's a track pack that they have. Um, that car is awesome. The only hesitations that I have with that car is that it's still produced today, still mass manufactured. So when we think about getting a car that may or may not hold its value, I don't think this car is gonna hold its value whatsoever, right? It's just the reality of it. Um, like a Gen a Gen 2, a Gen 1 Raptor, these vehicles hold their value relative, relatively. So that is car number four. So, the fifth and final car is easily at the top of my list. It is by far the most expensive. It is one my wife is on board with, but not with the price, what the prices are today. This is one that if I continue to scale and grow this channel, I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year and continue to post videos and do a ton of content on this is a Ford Shelby GT350. I don't think I need to explain why that is a car that is on my list. Um, it's a, I've never owned a Mustang, but my brother's five years older than me and I'll never forget the day I heard a V8 for the first time, at least in my memory. He bought a 1967 Mustang had a 5.0 in it and he brought it into the garage and he turned it on it was so loud I pissed myself but I loved it and I'll never forget that day I remember what I was standing I was remember what I was wearing I remember the garage I remember what it looked like I was in elementary school or maybe early middle school and at that point forward I fell in love with cars and I fell in love with a V8 um, you know when we think about dream cars and cars I'll never own but maybe a kick car of it uh, Shelby GT 350 1965 right Ken Miles you know uh, one of the best racers of all time that was unfortunately short-lived everybody has seen that video I'm sure that movie Ford vs GT he helped create that car and it just won championship after championship when it was released in 1965 the other one Eleanor 1967 GT 500 both those cars I'll probably never own in my life, but maybe a kick car of it or something like that would be awesome. Anyways, so Shelby GT350 uh, was a car that I was planning on buying and trading in my Focus RS. Obviously, everybody knows. Instead, I got a Gen 2 Raptor. Uh, I got that instead, uh, and I'm glad I did because it opened up the world to you know getting this Gen 1 off-roading and all that fun stuff and everything that I've posted in the channel so far so last video I posted uh, sort of my point of view on why I bought a gen 1 and got rid of my gen 2 I've heard a lot of great feedback and I appreciate everybody watching the video and commenting on the video 
Um, I have a friend here and she has a 2019 almost identical 802A uh, Oxford White Raptor like the one I had. So trying to figure out a weekend that works for her and me to uh, re record a comparison. And obviously there's a ton of comparison videos out there, but it would be more from my perspective and would love to hear why she has Gen 2 and why she loves it so much and why she'd never own a, a Gen 1. So keep a lookout for that. But in the meantime, uh, please like, comment, subscribe, comment below. If none of those five cars make sense for you and you have a different opinion, let me know. If one of the five cars, uh, there's things that I need to look at and I've done a ton of research on all of them, and that could be for a separate video, let me know. Really trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. I'm gonna continue to post content. I appreciate everybody swinging by. Hope everybody has an awesome Thanksgiving and a happy Thanksgiving and so grateful for so many different things. But uh, thank you for watching.